All right, good morning, guys. Hope you can see me. It's another beautiful, blessed morning in East Texas, and I get the opportunity to go explore more Texas lakes and try to catch more big Texas bass. Say last night again at this Lake Fork Marina. Very nice place, very inexpensive. Would recommend if you were traveling to the area. I'm about to travel like eh, an hour and a half today to a new lake, hoping I get that new lake good luck charm. This is a lake that I already had in mind that I wanted to fish and wanted to try, and it is a lake that a lot of you guys emailed me and DM'd me to go try. Now about that, I'm gonna try my best to answer every single one of you and fish with as many of you as I possibly can. I was very overwhelmed and flattered by the amount of requests I got that you guys wanted to fish with me. I very much appreciate it. Trust me, that does not go unnoticed. Unfortunately, I only have so much time on this fishing trip and so much time in the day to sit down and answer emails and DMs after I'm exhausted all day fishing and then editing, but it's not an excuse. We will get there. Hopefully, I can answer a lot of those today. I'm going to get driving. It's like eh, 6.15 now. Hopefully, we get there in the morning, but is just juiced up. It's just perfect because I want to catch some numbers. Haven't caught numbers at Lake Fork over two days. Caught one big one but haven't caught numbers. It's been a little slow. Hopefully today it picks up. I've heard this lake is a lot easier to figure out. Lake Fork is a very difficult lake to figure out for people that are inexperienced especially, but even experienced. I mean, this lake can kick your ass. Bryce has been fishing here his whole life and he didn't even catch a bass yesterday. So that's how Lake Fork can be. I'm gonna go to a lake today that's hopefully going to be a lot easier to figure out for beginners because I'm a beginner in bass fishing in Texas. All right, I'm feeling it today. It is gonna be a good lake. I'm really paying for not having sunglasses because. Texas sun is bright. It is bright. But this lake seemingly is pretty clear. It's got like at least five to six foot visibility. So a jerk bait might come into play. I'm excited about that. There's a lot of weeds in the lake. It's not very big, so I'll be able to fish a lot of the lake today. Hopefully I've got about nine hours. Water temp is, please load. There it is. Water temp is 62. I like that. That's perfect. I have no idea where I'm gonna start. I'll check back in when I know where I'm gonna start. Gotta look at the map. Haven't done that yet. All right, there's a lot of grass in this lake, so I am going to go with the trusty lipless crankbait. Pro tip, if you're on a new lake and you don't know where to start, start near the ramp because there's probably a lot of tournaments on that lake, and where do they drop all the bass after the tournaments? The ramp. This is not what you want when fishing lipless crankbaits. Oh, there's some of the weed I was looking for. Mixed with a bunch of nasty, goopy eelgrass and other stuff, but this right here, where are you? This is the good stuff. This is that good good. I need to find a bed of just this. Not all this goopy, nasty, big leaf eelgrass. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Spencer. Here's a pretty good one under a dock. All right, no! What, it's spooked? Ah, oh, Spencer, what do you have to say about that? Uh, I guess I'm bad luck. <laughs> this happened one other time. Well, guys, I uh, I decided to abandon trying to fish points and grass. I decided to fish something I'm more comfortable with. I started rolling around to docks. This is like the third dock that I've been skipping with this jig. I was reeling it out, and that fish decided to latch on. But uh, of course, I lost it. Spencer, I'm gonna blame you. Is the bad luck? Is that cool? Yeah, that's cool, bud. But uh, I guess I'm on the dock pattern in Texas. Texas is full of offshore structure in all these lakes and I catch the big one on fork on a dock and then I lose that one on a dock. So that's very fitting for someone from Illinois to only catch bass off docks. But if that's what I gotta do, that's what I will gladly do. And that was a pretty good fish too. That was like a two or three pounder. All right, I've got a clue. I have a sign. There's one right up under that dock all right all right they're on docks it's a pretty good fish to start the day too nice chunky two pounder oh i don't want to hit that dock that's a great start that dock right there is where i lost the first fish very next dock caught this guy both of those fish hit it when I was swimming that jig and they were both really shallow. That one was in like two foot. That one was way up at the base of the dock in like a foot of water. All right, good start. I love dock fishing with jigs. So this could be a really good day if they're on the dock bite really well. Well, uh, that's a new one. I just caught a fishing pole. Yeah, I, I thought I was snagged under the dock. I had no idea what I could have been snagged on. That's a new one. I can say with confidence that I've never, ever, ever done that before. All right, what's this cast gonna bring? A kiddie pole 
a bass or a backlash. No backlash. Bass. All right. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Okay. Well, every dock now has given me something. Four docks in a row, three fish, and a kitty pole. Thank you, fish. This one again hit it when I was swimming it. They do not want it on the bottom. They want it moving. Okay. So, uh, didn't take me long to figure out a pattern. They're on dock. This is not exactly a difficult pattern to figure out, but nonetheless, there are fish on docks. Not sure if I can get a big one doing this. I'm not going to do this all day because I want to try to catch a really big one in this lake. As I do every lake. I mean, every one of the bass fishes. The goal is always a big one, but I think those big ones are going to be offshore. There he is. No! No! I heard a big swirl back there. I casted right there and he snailed it and I set the hook. He was there, but he didn't stay on the hook. That was weird. These bass are super active right now. This was not like Lake Fork. I literally just shut the camera off after letting that fish go. Come on, fish, eat again. I don't think he's going to eat again. That was weird. Oh, that was so cool. I watched this fish come out and grab it. Little guy, but it's a bass nonetheless. Wow, these things are so aggressive right now. It is so nice to get into a good bass bite after the last two days of beating my head in at Lake Fork. Control motor, why are you doing that? They really want it moving this morning. This is basically turned into a swim jig, so I'm just skipping it under docks and swimming it out. Why are you doing that? These nasty weeds. And the cool thing is, is I fished one, two, three, four, five, six dock now. Dock bite is strong. There's one. Oh, that was so weird. I pitched it up in there. He was like swimming with me. He hit it almost immediately. I never knew he had it. Got a real half-ass hook set. Half-ass hook sets equal fish jumping off on you. That's one thing I've noticed with swimming a jig under docks. It can be super effective, but you don't always get a great hook set. I mean, this is a really sharp hook, but do not always get him to the boat, unfortunately. So I've now missed two really good fish today. I'm pretty sure the, the two biggest fish that I've had on are the two that jumped off. The very first one I've hooked and now this one. But that's okay. They're not true giants. They're only like, they're both probably three pounders. Now, if a six or seven pounder does that, or God forbid an eight, nine, ten, then I'll be crying. And I won't have anyone to blame that they didn't grab it. Wink, wink. I'm really impressed by this jig too as well. This is just a V&M skipping bait, but if you notice, I'm skipping under all these docks and what's allowing me to do that so easily, especially in these waves, is this head design. It's a very flat design. It skips really well on the water. Especially when you add something like this, just like a craw trailer to it that adds like a big flat profile. It makes, it makes skipping a hell of a lot easier. There's one. Come on out of there. Oh, it's a big one. Oh yeah, maybe I can catch a pretty big one under a dock. Skipped it so far under there. Come on, Sally. Yes. Oh. Yes. Woo. You guys probably can't see, but see those triple pilings in the middle? It was really lucky. I wasn't aiming for there. I skipped it way up under there and got in between those three pilings and heard a tick. This big girl grabbed it. Not a huge Texas bass. Not nearly as big as a six pound 11 ounce fish I caught yesterday, but this is a close to four pounder. She's, uh, she's definitely been caught before. What a fun way to catch a fish though. See you girl. Thanks for playing. Hope your mouth gets better. You're still able to eat the jig. I'm happy for that. The dock pattern is not exactly on fire. It's not a set deal. There's definitely fish under docks. Well, there's obviously fish under docks because the only bass I've caught today 
have been under docks. However, I've really tried to make other spots work. I've fished a ton of points. I've fished grass edges. I've fished green grass with lipless crankbaits. I just can't get a bite doing anything but skipping a jig under the docks. Oh! Got him on the second drop. He bit it the first time. Missed him. Pitch right back up in there. Little Texas bass was hungry. All right, we're getting into the last 45 minutes or so of daylight. It's kind of been tough this afternoon. Haven't caught much. It's been a while since I caught that last fish. I'm gonna send out this guy, Lee's Water Chopper. Water's pretty cold for top water. It's like 63 degrees, but it's not out of the question totally. I've caught a lot of big bass on Illinois on this. You guys know how badly I want to catch a big Texas bass in this guy right here. So, I'm gonna give her a whirl. Oh my god! Oh my god! Huge bass first cast! Oh my god! Oh my god! Holy my god! Oh my god! It's a giant! It's a giant! Oh my god! No way! No way! Oh my god, it's a giant! Oh my god! This might be the biggest bass of my life! Oh my god! Come on! Stay hooked! Stay hooked! Come on, please, please, please stay hooked. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit, Lee. Holy shit. Lee, I knew this was catch a big bass. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. This thing is ancient. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. First cast with it. Oh my God. Guys, it takes a lot for me to shake from bass fishing and I am shaking. Oh, oh my God. I don't think it's quite a 10 pounder, but it's almost sure my new personal best. Oh my God. Okay. I need to make sure this fish is alive, has a lot of water. This is an old, old fish. This thing's like got mold on it or something. I can't believe that it had enough energy to come up and hit that top water. Guys, I'm still shaking, that is just unbelievable. There's a little store over there, there's a bunch of people on the ramp, I'm gonna see if someone has a scale. The fish barely fits in the live well. I feel bad keeping them in there for the minute because that is an old fish, the last thing I wanna do is kill it, but I need a picture of this thing at the very least and I'd love to get a weight on it. I don't think it'll go 10, I think it's probably around in a uh, seven to nine pounder, depending on how fat it is, because it's old and it's skinny. It has the body to be a 10, but it's not a 10. Okay. And that's fast that I can right. called yesterday. Yeah. All right, so we got a bunch of pictures of this fish. These kind gentlemen here took the pictures. Thank you guys. It's a beautiful, really old Texas fish. Probably doesn't have much life left in her, but she had enough to hit the top water. There you go. Oh, she, I think she looks good. Yeah, she'll be fine. All right, thank you guys. Oh, yeah. Seen yeah. <laughs> the crazy thing about that fish is that fish was so incredibly old. I guarantee you that fish a couple of years ago was a 10 pound bass and in the spring, it's definitely a 10 pounder, but it was just so skinny, it was so old. That was about 24, 25 inches long. This is Lee's water chopper. It's actually a musky bait that he downsized for bass. It's just a big soup for you bass guys. It's basically a big, much louder, better designed whopper plopper. I mean, it's got a metal cut blade. This hook hanger allows it to always run straight. Nice, big, sharp hook so that when a big bass eats it, you get him in the boat. I mean, I caught some big Illinois pond bass on this thing and I waited forever to come down to Texas to fish it. First cast, catch the biggest bass of my life. How about that? How about that sunset? 
Sunsets are way prettier when you catch your personal best. What did we learn today? Chris learned that I need a scale. There's a, like a little marine store right there in the parking lot, like by the ramp, but I, I didn't have a cold bag. That fish is so old. I wanted to do everything I could to keep it alive. What an unbelievable day. Every time I fish a new Texas lake, something just incredible happens. It's this is such a beautiful state for bass fishing. You guys have to realize, I'm from Chicago. A, a fish like that is just a myth. My whole life, you couldn't catch a fish like that. So for me, one, to have the opportunity just to come down here and fish for these fish, and I mean, I caught one almost seven yesterday. I don't know how big that one was because we didn't wait, but I mean, that was, that fish dwarfed the six pound, 11 ounce fish that I caught yesterday on Lake Fork. Just, uh, just just really speechless i knew the second it hit it was just a giant the biggest bass i had ever caught on lee's freaking top water bait too i just had like a six sense feeling about that bait i knew big texas bass would love it and that fish was all about this bait right here i mean just listen to it it's hypnotic i look forward to using that bait for a very 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 long time so thank you lee that bait will be linked down in the description below if you guys want to check it out on his website. He custom hand makes every single one of those. They're really a work of art bait. Nothing more to say after catching a fish that big. I've been in Texas three days. First day in fork was awful. Second day in fork, six pound, 11 ounce. Today on this lake, I catch, I don't know how big, biggest bass of my life.